Here in Massachusetts, where many of our country's most valued traditions first took root, the state's transportation agency is championing innovation. The Massachusetts Department of Transportation, MassDOT, is changing how it does business. For years, Massachusetts had separate agencies to deal with its various modes of transportation. But in 2009, they were folded into one agency, the Massachusetts Department of Transportation. Now, when mobility challenges arise, they work together to find solutions. Solutions that are best for the Commonwealth as a whole. MassDOT's bridge program is an excellent example. Rather than building bridges the way they've always been built, with months or years of traffic congestion, work zone slowdowns, and traffic cones, MassDOT's bridge engineers took a look at what others were doing, both here in the United States and around the world. What they found were innovations. Innovations that cut construction time, cut costs, improved safety during the construction period, and created bridges of higher quality. And bridge quality is important because the longer a bridge lasts, the longer the period of time before crews have to come back in for repairs or reconstruction. It has been the history, uh, not just in Massachusetts, but in uh, states all over the country, that projects take too long that projects are uh, in place for a long time, disrupting the traffic for a long time. We wanted here in Massachusetts to uh, do things differently and actually uh, complete our projects in a timely manner so that we can get in and get out and stay out of the way of the traveling public. One of the program's earliest projects is called Fast 14. 14 because 14 bridges were involved in the project and fast because its goal was to cut construction time from four or five years to one. During the summer of 2011, MassDOT replaced all 14 deteriorated bridge superstructures on a section of I-93 without impacting weekday rush hour traffic. How? By using innovative techniques and construction practices that allowed them to replace the actual bridge superstructures on the weekends. The original bridges were built roughly 60 years ago, back in the glory days of constructing the interstate system. But by 2010, they had reached the end of their service lives with deteriorating concrete on the bridge decks and the steel beams under those decks in need of significant repair. At this point, it was obvious that a major effort was needed, one that would not only repair the bridges, but do it in a way that would minimize disruptions for the nearly 180,000 vehicles that travel I-93 each day. In this particular project, with the volume of traffic and uh, with, the, uh, with this being a major route through the state of Massachusetts, that was a perfect uh, site and a perfect project for trying to use innovative uh, technologies to build it and get it done as quickly as we could and get out in, in, in less than one construction season instead of four or five years. Between last year and right now, we went from identifying a project, developing um, a, a whole specification, putting it out to bid, selecting a contractor, designing the contract, and getting out here. And as I said, we're, you know, this is our sixth weekend, and it, never before have we have turned something around that quickly. And design build was just one of the many innovative practices MassDOT employed on this project. They also used prefabricated bridge elements, which allowed the replacement superstructures to be built in modular units off-site. The traditional method of on-site casting requires keeping traffic off the bridge structure until the units have had time to cure. But by building the units off-site, MassDOT avoided major traffic delays during the work week. With the use of prefabricated modular units is another innovation that we are employing here, not particularly for the first time, but maybe for the first time at that scale. This is uh, like 14 superstructures in 10 weekends. That's a very aggressive and very huge project. The benefits of modular construction go beyond simply minimizing delays. Because the modular units are fabricated in a controlled factory setting, their quality is higher than when casting them in place. And these higher quality units extend the overall service life of the structure. Once completed, 
The modular units were transported to a holding area adjacent to the job site until it was time for installation. Installation required closing each bridge location. MassDOT decided to complete this phase on weekends to avoid impacting rush hour traffic. At 6 p.m. on Friday, the road beneath the bridge being worked on was closed to allow crews to move equipment into place. Two hours later, workers crossed all I-93 traffic to one side of the existing highway, leaving the work zone side available for construction. Traffic from one direction was routed over the median onto the opposite side of the highway. The two opposing directions of traffic were separated by a movable zipper barrier installed throughout the 4.5-mile construction zone. Once the work zone was secured, the existing superstructures could be demolished, modular units hoisted into place, and the steel beams of the units connected. Carpenters then built the formwork for the concrete connection. Once the formwork was complete, crews poured a connection called a closure pour using a quick-setting concrete. Well, one of the, uh, the biggest uh, portions of, this con of the project itself is the type of concrete that we're using. It's a high early strength concrete. Uh, it's something that we haven't used on our other projects before. Uh, it comes up to strength in about four hours that we can actually put traffic, construction traffic on, not ha actual highway traffic. Once the concrete was set, crews erected temporary barrier systems and applied temporary line striping. The freeway was completely reopened to traffic by 5 a.m. on Monday morning. It's a real, real great concept. It's all choreographed. It's one bridge after another. Uh, we do upwards of seven bridges a, a, on a weekend, some type of work on every bridge once we get going. So it's, it's quite, quite intense on uh, Saturday and Sunday out here. Other work, such as substructure repairs, barrier installation, and paving, occurred on weekdays and weeknights. No work occurred during the weekday commute. The innovations of Fast 14 were driven primarily by the timeline that was delivered. It was well known that this project, 14 bridges, were going to be done over a period of 10 to 12 weekends in the summer of 2011. Therefore, it kept everyone on the critical path not only for the innovations to come up with the mixes but for the reviews and approvals uh, to get those things done. Accomplishing this work in ways that benefited the public was good. However, including the public in the decision-making process and informing them about how the construction activities would take place went a long way in gaining their trust and approval. That's the approach MassDOT took. Each step of the way, the public, including neighbors of the project, nearby businesses and homeowners, commuters, tourists, truckers, anyone who had a stake in the project or who would be impacted by the construction was consulted. An online forum was developed, a newsletter was published, and the local news media partnered with MassDOT to spread the word. Once the project was underway, communication became even more vital. MassDOT used changeable message boards to communicate accurate travel times prior to key interchanges and to help drivers decide which alternate route to take. The other technologies that we have used had to do with traffic and traffic management and traffic warning. At every major interchange uh, south of here and north of here, there are traffic signs that warn the people, the drivers who are going north and going south on this interstate, to warn them about the construction warn them about the time, the possible time delays, and actually giving them uh, real time. Like if you go on 93, it's going to take you half an hour, but if you take this detour instead, it might take you uh, only 20 minutes. The Fast 14 project exemplifies MassDOT's accelerated bridge program and its goals for improving bridge condition, stimulating economic development and job creation, being efficient and innovative, transparent and accountable, and providing access and opportunity. Again, it's, it's, we're, we're sticking to the motto, get in, get out, and stay out. You know, we're getting in, we're doing rapid, uh, good quality work, and then we're going to get out, and hopefully we'll stay out for, uh, for a number of years and uh, going into the future. Fast 14 is also a good example of innovation that works. It's projects like these that bridge the gap between how things have been done and how things can be done. By putting 
this program together, the Accelerated Bridge Program, and focusing in on bringing innovation into Massachusetts, we're now sort of changing the, the, the culture both within the engineering community that, yes, these types of projects are possible, but more importantly, within the contracting community, that they're gaining experience to say, hey, yeah, we can actually do it. Shortening project delivery is a very important initiative throughout the entire transportation industry. It's a better way to serve the American people, uh, to be more uh, efficient in government, and more effective for that matter. Massachusetts takes pride in its traditions, and visitors can see it all around them, from the historic buildings to the statues of our founding fathers. But it's also a state that has embraced innovation. When the Industrial Revolution came to America in the 1800s, it was in Lowell, Massachusetts, that it first found a home. The first American railroad was built in Quincy, and the first gasoline-powered automobile was perfected in Springfield. In fact, when we consider many of the symbols of tradition scattered throughout Massachusetts, we recognize that those early leaders of the Commonwealth and of this country were themselves innovators. Those same symbols of tradition are also symbols of a break with tradition. Though not considered so at the time, our founding fathers were perhaps the greatest innovators of their generation. By embracing new, even radical ideas, they were really saying, there's a better way to do this, a better way forward. Just as MassDOT is doing today, embracing highway innovations that will move its transportation infrastructure and the millions of people who use it into the 21st century. Now, that's innovation we can all embrace. Uh, when we implement these creative or innovative ideas uh, at the state level in partnership with the industry, the private sector, and the federal government, and state government, uh, you, you end up with a, a safer uh, infrastructure. And, and really that's our number one goal throughout the entire nation is, is to provide a safe infrastructure that will uh, allow better mobility. Uh, we want people to spend less time in traffic, more time doing what they want to do.